Welcome to episode three of my MMO series. The goal of today's topic is to introduce and motivate basic organizational patterns that we will undoubtedly use in the future. Specifically, we are going to group different components to create a cohesive game object, and we are going to build systems around those components. So back in the images folder of our MMO project, I created an extra little man. I called him man two, and I gave him a little hat so he could differentiate himself. So let's see how well our game code scales to adding a new man. So the first thing we need to do is uh, duplicate this uh, sprite loading code. And then instead of calling it man sprite in man position, we'll just do hat man sprite in hat man position. And we'll call him man2 here. The next thing we need to do is uh, duplicate the input handling. So uh, we'll add kind of a local multiplayer where the uh, man without a hat is operated from the arrow keys. Uh, and the man with a hat, uh, hat man, as we like to call him, is going to be operated from WASD. So we basically uh, modified instead of using arrow keys, we're using WASD, and then we're going to use we're going to modify the hat man position rather than the man position. Finally, the last thing we have to do is update the draw calls. We also want to draw a hat man now, and then obviously when we draw him, we want to use the hat man position. So let's run our code and see what happens. So now we have hat man who's controllable with WASD, and then we have regular man which is controllable with the arrow key cluster. All right, so ideally we wouldn't have to duplicate code so much in our main function. Uh, ideally we'll have some uh, better organization to, uh, so to enable us to uh, better scale in terms of how many game objects we want to add to our game. So let's try to organize things a little bit better uh, to reach that goal. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a, a person type, and that's going to represent all of our characters in the game. Uh, and we'll give, them, we'll give them a sprite component. And then we'll give them a position component. And then we can start with that, I think. Next, we'll define a constructor function called new person. It'll take in the sprite and position components, and it'll just assign those directly to the person struct. So this will be the struct that we return. Next, let's offload the draw function. So this is the draw method that we'll add to our person class, and it takes in a window because because that's the target we're going to be drawing to initially. And the actual draw function that we'll make looks like this. It's very similar to what we had before, except we'll use the uh, um, except we'll use the p dot sprite dot draw to to take the uh, sprite component from our person struct, uh, and then we'll also use the p dot position to take the position component from our person struct. And then as before, we'll just draw to the window that was passed in. So up above, let's, con let's construct our two people. We'll make a man. So we'll make a man here, and we'll just pass in the man sprite in the man position. And then we'll make a hat man. We'll pass in the hat man sprite in the hat man position that we loaded in above. And then we'll delete these and replace them with our uh, recently coded draw functions uh, for our person object. So now that we've uh, replaced it quite a bit of things, let's uh, rerun our code and see what happens. So running our code now, we're actually not able to move our people. Uh, and the reason that is, is because um, the man position here that we uh, created initially and then passed into this new person function, uh, when we pass it into this new person function, it passes in a copy of the struct. So if we look at our new person function, uh, it doesn't take a pointer, it takes the uh, original struct so how, what Go will do here is it'll pass in a copy rather than the initial object. Uh, so, so, whenever, um, so whenever we draw, we're going to be using a copied version uh, of the position. And then if you look back on our input handling code, uh, the man position that we're dealing with is the initial um, position vector struct that we had constructed. Um, so, so this one will be updating, but it's not the same one that's being used by our draw call. And that's why our, that's why our um, uh, movement code is no longer working. So what we need to do next is we need to add an input handling function to our person object so that we can handle inputs. Uh, but uh, the weird part here is that each person wants to use different uh, key clusters to modify their input. So what we want to do is we may want to make a key bind struct. Um, and, and we'll, so we'll make a key bind struct so that each person object can have a customizable way uh, to map different keys to different outcomes. So let's start that process. So we'll define a key bind object here. And what this will contain is an up, down, left, and right uh, pixelgl.button. 
And that's what uh, we'll, we'll use internally for the person down here. So in here, we'll specify the key bind. I'm going to call it uh, key binds plural because I feel like I think that's more clear. So the next thing we need to do is uh, when we construct our person object, we want to use our new key binds struct as well. So we'll pass it in here, but we also need to pass it into the constructor function. So here's our new keybinds um, struct that we're passing into our new person constructor. So now when we construct our new person up above, we need to actually accommodate this uh, new parameter that needs to be passed into our constructor. So for our man object, we'll pass in a keybinds object that we'll just build directly into the constructor function. And then for up, we're going to put uh, pixelgl dot key up. So we'll specify uh, up as key up, down as key down, left as key left, and right as key right. We also need to do the exact same thing for our hat man, but we're going to use a different key cluster this time. So for up, we'll do W. For down, we'll do S. For left, we'll do A. And then right, we'll do D. Now our guy's being built perfectly, uh, but we don't have a function that replicates this input handling code just yet. So let's add that next. So we'll copy this code. This will be our input handling function, handle input. Let's paste that code directly in here, and then we can modify it to use our um, person struct. So instead of pixelgl.keyLeft, uh, what we want to do is uh, p.keybinds.left, p.keybinds.right, p.keybinds.up.left. And then instead of using man position, which doesn't exist in this function, we want to do p.position for each of these. And the last thing that I had forgotten to do was uh, we want to also pass in the window object because we need that to detect when the keys are pressed because we use it here. So we can pass it in like so. Now let's go back to our uh, game loop and we'll delete the old input handling code and then we'll add the new input handling code. All right, let's run our code and uh, make sure everything's working still. Oh, I appear to have uh, typoed some things. When I hit left, it goes down, it goes down left. Oh, yeah. So on this one, I accidentally didn't put down. So that was uh, an error when I originally wrote this function. Let's rerun that. Left, down, right, up. Okay, there we go. Now everybody's working again. Perfect. So we have some good uh, level of abstraction for what a person represents. They represent something that can be drawn to the window, uh, and then something that can be moved based off of a configurable keybind struct. So the last problem we're going to tackle is, uh, let's say we wanted to scale up to 100 different people. Uh, what we would have to do is we have duplicated code just like this, and we'd have to do that a hundred times. So that doesn't uh, sound very fun to type out. So uh, what we want to do instead is instead of um, instead of instead of thinking of people as individual persons, what we'll do instead is we'll we'll just keep a slice of all of the people, and then we'll loop over that slice to do all of the input handling and all of the draw calls. So we can we can create a person slice here. And then instead of, uh, instead of assigning the man variable, what we'll do instead is we'll do people equals append people, and then we'll add a new person to this slice. So kind of it takes the, it takes the people slice here, appends this person to them, uh, and then returns that. And then it assigns it back to the people slice. So we can duplicate that code down here. And now we have an array of uh, all of the people. So now instead of two handle input function calls, what we can do is we'll place, replace that with a for loop. Uh, and on the people slice, we'll iterate through it. And then for every single people.i, uh, we'll do handle input on them. And then we can delete these this old code. We can do the same thing for the draw calls. Uh, instead of individually calling man.draw and hatman.draw, we'll change it to loop through the people array and draw each one of them. So all in all, all we have to do is loop over the array twice, uh, once to handle input and once to draw. Notably, it's kind of weird to separate these now, uh, but in the future, there might be some code like collision detection. And uh, if the collision detection was in between this, we would want to handle all the input first, then do all of the collision detections, and then do all of the draws. Else, uh, if, we handled one, if we handled input on one person, and then we did collision detection on them second, like in the same loop, uh, then every other person would be in their old position rather than their new position. So we want to move all the people first, then we want to do all of the collision detections. Since we don't have collision detections, we'll just leave this right now, leave it like this right now, but uh, in the future we'll have to separate like this anyways.
all right, let's run our code and hope it works. So there's some uh, typos, I guess. Ah, missing parentheses twice. We'll rerun that. Cool. Everything's working just as we had before. All right, so that's our initial reorganization. Uh, I don't expect that the person struct is going to stay around forever. Uh, I just think it's a nice little organizational tool, at least to start out, just to think about um, breaking each game feature into its own component. For example, we have sprites that are a part of the draw systems. So we break those into the sprite component. Then we have position, which is probably a part of a lot of different systems like drawing, moving, collision detection, etc. cetera. Uh, so that's kind of one component as well. And then key binds is useful for the input system. So as long as we keep these separated, it'll be easy to break them up in uh, better organizational ways in the future. All right, well, that's all I had for today. Uh, I hope you found this interesting um, and leave a like and a follow if you want.